Alright guys, so obviously speed is an important factor in any racing game, but the way you start the match is also up there as well. I mean, the start boost mechanic in Crash is honestly my favorite in any racing game. It rewards the player for, you know, the timing, similar to Mario Kart, but it's a lot harder for sure. Um, you can see here I actually warm up the engine pretty, pretty good, but it doesn't matter because, you know, my last press was a fail. Um, and it's really important in this game because you want to avoid that really crazy beginning. I mean, hitting that wall didn't help there too. But I was in front of the line, you know, I had no excuse. I missed it, and look at me. I'm in seventh place. Funny thing is, they'll actually end up winning this race. But, you know, I just want to show you guys how to do this. It's not too hard. Um, but let's just get one thing out of the way. This isn't Mario Kart. You know, don't bring those mechanics into Mario Kart. Don't play like it's Mario Kart, because that's not going to help you at all. Not hating on Mario Kart, though. I actually played Mario Kart 8 Deluxe so much on my Switch. And on the Wii U, too, but I actually bought it twice. But here's an example of that. In Mario Kart, you get the boost by holding the go button at the last light or the last number as it's fading. And you actually do get a boost here if you do that. But looking at the bottom right, it's not going to be the max boost. It's almost there, but that's not good enough. You know, you want to, like I said, start off as good as possible. So let me go ahead and show you. Okay, so let's start off with warming up your engine. So you need to do at least three button presses, as you can see on the bottom right. Now... You could, the latest you can do it is on the second light, and I'll show you that on the second clip. You can see here, one, two, three. And once you reach the third one, you'll get the max meter. But the thing is, if you do it early on, you got to keep pressing the button to keep the engine warm. In this clip, I do it on the second light, which is what I found out is the latest you can get the third one. And, you know, there you go. I did shorter presses, so the meter stayed in the middle, and I got the full meter. But the thing is, if you do it, you know, short presses, you're going to have to do it a little bit more. That could be challenging to some people, but everyone's different. So here's another clip of that example of the second light. Something I did forget to point out is you can actually keep the meter in the middle. Now, you don't have to. That's only just to make it a little easier, I feel like, um, to get the last boost. You can let it drop on the bottom if you like, but just make the timing a little bit more harder. I found that it's more natural to just keep it in the middle because, you know, the last button press is pretty easy. And I can't get this shortcut to save my life. But let me just compare some uh, meters for you guys. So not entirely in sync, but you can see how different each meter is. You can do short presses, large presses, like I was saying. Um, and I just love that about this game because you're not forced to do it one certain way. Now, personally for me, I like cutting the intro short sometimes and just getting into the rhythm of, you know, doing my presses. As you can see here, as I'm waiting for everyone else to get into the match. And, you know, get the timer up. And there you go. I get my boost just like that. Now, do it however you like, as comfortable as you like to be. Yeah, I just want to do this quick short video on how to do a start boost because, like I said earlier, getting away from the crowd in the beginning could give you a huge lead, and as you can see here, I'm doing that. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.